Today's shoot takes place at an unusual location and we're gonna take the opportunity to experiment with lens choices and point of view as we photograph some very interesting subjects from some unusual perspectives. So let's dive into it. All right, I really like what I see over here. This gentleman is gonna make a fantastic subject for us to, to experiment with a couple of unique points of view. What's that old photojournalism saying? Climb a tree, dig a hole, find a unique point of view. I don't know. But those old war photographers are all crazy anyways. Okay, this is a fantastic perspective. I can shoot straight downwards on my subject, which is something that you don't expect to see every day. And that's really the point of this whole exercise, is to throw something unexpected at our viewer. So I'm really liking the perspective here, but I'm not really feeling it with a 50 millimeter lens. I've got a little too much going on in the frame, and there's no clear subject in this shot. That's something to be aware of. If you can't really say what the main photo of your subject is, don't expect your viewer to get it either. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my 70 to 200 millimeter lens, which gives me the possibility to zoom in tighter and eliminate some of the busyness around my subject. I'm interested in him and his work tools and bench are kind of accessory details here. It's not an environmental shot, it's more of an action detail picture. This is definitely working. I really dig the picture. So that was a lot of fun, but let's see if we can change it up and find a really low point of view somewhere here. Of course, I'm not actually digging any holes, but I'm looking for an opportunity to shoot from a really low position so that I can photograph with an upward angle. Because I'm photographing very close to his hands, they're going to look larger and a lot more powerful especially with that wide angle lens distortion. But that works really well for this kind of picture. As I get close to my subject with this wide angle lens, I'm going to remind myself to think about that aperture setting. In this dark environment, it's tempting to shoot at f2.8 so that I can get more light into my photograph, but the depth of field is going to be way too thin. I'll end up having his face in focus, but his hands will be so blurry that it'll be difficult to understand the story completely. If we make our viewer work too hard to understand the story in our picture, they lose interest. So I'm closing my aperture down to f8 so that I can get those hands and the tools and the subject himself all nice and sharp in my shot. My ISO is going to take care of itself because I'm on auto ISO. If I need to darken or lighten my exposure, I'm just going to use the exposure compensation right on top of my camera. Just doing a quick check on my LCD to see if f8 was enough depth of field for this shot. Sometimes it can be surprising how much aperture you need when you're in this close. This looks pretty good. All right, well, we're having a terrific time here, but we thought this makes a natural moment to quickly tell you about the fantastic courses that we run over at viewfindermastery.com. If you wanna learn photography in a clear and structured way from professional photography educators, then come and check us out over at viewfindermastery.com. We've got courses in all kinds of photography topics from portraiture and sports photography to landscape and Lightroom, you name it. Of course, you don't have to take my word for it. We've got great customer ratings, so just check out our Google and Facebook ratings to hear what others are saying first, and then I would love to see you join us over at viewfindermastery.com. 
I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. Please like and share this video with your photography friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.